right and left, any animals. I love doing this, okay? Throw them around. And when they turn and look at me, I'll stop and I'll move a little bit to the right. And then I'll start throwing a rope, start throwing a rope. The mule's looking around. He'll stop to look at me. I'll stop and I'll move to the right. Pretty soon, this mule's all cranked his head around and he's thinking, dang, my neck is starting to get sore. I think I better... I better move around like this. And now he's turning and facing you. You see? You cannot, folks, keep pressuring them like that. If you're going to pressure them, all they're going to do is climb up the side of the hill. It's not important to put the come along rope on them. It's important that they're standing still and quiet, that they drop their nose, tip their nose to the left. That's when you can put a come along hitch on them. But not when they're worried. Not when they're concerned. Folks, all you're doing is making it worse. You already have a brat. Now you're going to have a monster brat. So back away. Set back. They're, they're moving around the pen. Throw the rope out. Throw the rope here and there. Pretty soon they start getting kind of inquisitive. Like, how come you're doing that? How come you're not coming to get me? You know, what's going on? And don't worry about bouncing on them. Throw it around the ground a few times. Then bounce it across their rump. Bounce it across their legs. You know, you're not desensitizing them. You're just giving them something else to think about. And then pretty soon when they're looking at you all the time, walk over toward them. And when they look away, stop. Start bouncing the rope again. Bouncing the rope again. It's not important to put the bridle on, the come along hitch, or the halter if their head is in the air, if they're all worried. When their head is down, they're relaxed, put the bridle on. But don't put it on. Don't put it on. Don't put it on if they're upset. You want them as quiet when you begin, as when you end, please. Very good. Uh, so we've gone over. Do you have a few extra minutes, Steve? We have a few questions to get to. Oh, absolutely. Let's go. Okay. The next question that I got, this one comes from Sharon. Sharon emailed in. She says, my friend's mule is at my place. Keeps trying to attack my very kind dogs. How do we yeah. stop the mule from doing this? I'm very distraught. Yeah, you should be distraught. Uh, you know, unfortunately, you can't stop them, okay? They're, they're very aggressive when it comes down the dogs. I, I, I do have a couple techniques that I like to use, and it works very well. But again, this is natural. This is natural. It's natural for them to chase off the dogs. Will they kill a dog? Yep. Yep, they will. Okay, this is what I would do, and this will help you. But again, this is not trained so that they'll never go after a dog again, it is when you got this collar on, you don't attack a dog. So you take a dog collar on that vibrates, you have to add an extra strap to it to go around their neck. And then when they, when, again, folks, when they're thinking about it, <coughs> not when they've done it. So when they put, point an ear or look at a dog, hit them with the vibrator, Bzz, the vibrator. Knock electric shock, the vibrator or the noise, okay? Now, it's going to bugger them. They'll even sometimes take off running, give them plenty of room, but they'll pretty soon, they'll learn that they don't look toward that dog. And here's the problem, folks. Here's the problem. Listen to me well. They'll even attack the kid. Some of them will even attack a kid. So don't think that Fluffy is going to be like a dog. Well, the dogs attack too, okay? But... You know, if you, you're not going to change what's natural. They're going to keep on attacking the dogs, but the collar will help. Otherwise, what I do, I take the dogs and put them in a kennel while I'm working with the mules. Now, when I go out and I'm riding, this happened to me almost three weeks ago, huh, Dave? Yeah. I'm, 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 I'm out riding a 20-plus-year-old mule, nice mule, ranch mule, seen plenty of dogs, a lot of dogs, cattle, rattlesnake, deers, this mule has been a pack mule, been a cowboy mule all this time. It's a working mule, all right? I'm riding this mule. All of a sudden, my puppy, hi, Jess, that's my puppy laying over there. He jumps up, the, the, um, Jess goes by, and it scares my mule. My mule seen plenty of dogs, but it caught him off guard. My mule jumped up, kicked at my dog, fortunately missed him, but knocked my pelvis out and three vertebrae in my neck. OK, and now here's one that has seen hundreds of dogs. We we use dogs all the time. OK, hunting and, and working cattle and all. It happens. You cannot break. You cannot change what is natural. You need to ride it through. 
that was from a time where I almost got bucked off. Yep. There you go. All right. Let's get to the next one here. This one comes from uh, Nina. Nina emailed in. She says, I got two donkeys coming end of July. Good for you. A gelding and a Jenny, approximately eight years old. Not sure of their age, but we'll have the vet come to do a wellness check and this way can establish a good vet near me. I am wondering, I have grass in my two acres. Do I still need to feed some hay in evening and 12% pellets? Do not put them out in a grassy pasture with all that smorgasbord. Mules and donkeys cannot sustain prosperity. Now, if it's a sorry pasture, it's one thing. But here's the problem, folks. They don't need to eat all the time. They don't. You know, you're not fattening up a steer for butcher. They do not need to eat all the time. Get the vet to do their teeth. Put a muzzle on them a good part of the time, and that'll help. But the problem is you'll start developing those fat pockets on the crest of the neck, dock of the tail, top of the ribs, and you now have grass founder. Real simple. Happens real quick. So I don't know how prosperous your, your, your pasture is, so I can't say add feed. If it was me, I would not add feed. <clears throat> if it was me, I would take them off of a pasture and I would put them in a corral, each one of them, and I would feed them accordingly so I can keep an eye on their health. Now, you and I know that if we go to a smorgasbord, we're going to overeat, and that's what happens out there in the pasture. They don't need to be out on a pasture fattening up like steers. I'm putting a link to Mules Can't Stand Prosperity. Good one. Um, yep. Because that's Mules Can't Stand Prosperity. All right, putting that in there so folks can check it out. Uh, great article, and it's shot to number one on uh, Google when you search mule feed and nutrition. Mules can't stand prosperity is right there. Folks are finding what they're looking for. Next Good. question, this one comes from Dan. He says, I have Spike, a 15-3 hand, 1,300-pound draft cross mule, 10 years old, and oh. has only been trained in the past two years. He has been responding well but still gets spooked and is really hard to stop. Normally... He uh, stops and rains very well. I have been using, uh, I have been using, oh, I just lost my spot. Uh, I've been using a Western medium curve bit on him. The vet floated the teeth uh, of several horses at my place, but said the mule's teeth did not need floating and looked really nah. good. I was nah. wondering if the mule rider's martingale would help with stopping this big mule when he spooks. The spooking is a problem when I ride with my wife and uh, her nervous wound up horse. I ride alone for now. Any advice would be appreciated. This is a good one. Steve, what do you have to say? Okay. Spooking is natural. Again, folks, you can't change it. What you can do is train it. Okay. Now, I, I disagree with your vet. You know, uh, th these mules need to have their teeth done once a year minimum. Now, you test it out yourself. Hold the lower jaw, take the upper jaw, and go back and forth and see how much grinding you have. That You'll hear that grinding. The teeth need to be done. A lot of these veterinarians are scared of mules, folks. And, and, and I tell you, yeah, I can understand that because of what we hear. Now, the other thing is right in behind the eye, on the, right, the left-hand eye, push right in here, right in this area here. And you see the socket up above. See how much it puffs up. That'll tell you about your incisors. So let's go back to your deal. Folks, this is a mule. It's got a different palate than a horse does. When you are training, you it's imperative that you use a snaffle bit, not just any snaffle bit, double twisted wire full ring. Okay, now here's the downside of just using that bit. The thing about that double twisted wire, it is far smoother, superior, easier on, on these animals than a smooth snaffle bit. I've had more people bring me mules that have been horse trained with horses, horsemen that are using smooth snaffle bits because they pull a lot. The more you pull, the stiffer they're going to get. All five major neck muscles getting tight. So the mule riders, Martingale, watch the video. When you see that mule going around, that mule is throwing a fit. It's a well-trained mule, but people have done some, some horse things on it, pulling on them especially. And Pretty soon, there's no rider, and just the mule rider's martingale. You see him going around the circle. You see the mule start to smooth out. You see him start to get quiet, and no rider. So what happened? The bit done the job. The martingale with the string done the job. Remember, folks, when, you, when you're talking about bridles, too, the bridle has to be built for the bit. 
Not just any bridle because it looks good. Not just any bit because it looks good. One that works on the palate of the mule. And that's what happens with my bits. My port is designed in such a way for the palate of the mule. It's a quarter inch difference on the palate when it comes down to my correctional mouthpieces. All right, good there. Uh, David has a follow up on the dog question. He says, my mule seems to play with my dog. Could they be friends or will the mule kill the dog? They, for the most part, they kind of can be friends, but you're talking predator and prey. And yes, I've seen more than one mule kill a, kill a nice dog, you know, folks. And they'll also kill calves. And I've also seen them attack kids. You just got to be careful. That's a predator down there. And all of a sudden, they cut him off guard or something, bang. They're going to kick him, bite him, or something like that. So you may think they're playing, but there could be some aggression there. Uh, next question. This one comes from Leslie. You and I talked about this, Steve, uh, but I wanted to go ahead and put it out here because I figure some other folks may have a question about it. Leslie was asking, can I use the come-along rope and the mule riders martingale at the same time. So that was the original question. Yeah. And uh, and she wrote, I saw in a vid in an online video clip in the section of problem mule after I asked my original question of can I use them at the same time, that the come along was being used at the first time someone gets on uh, their back. I yes. feel like that will give me the best correction for standing with him, but it yes. does get in the way of the martingale. Would a string halter be a better choice for this stage of training? It gets in the way too. So first question. Can I can I use them together for folks who are watching? And then the string halter uh, question for Leslie. Okay, not the string halter. Definitely the come along hitch with the mule riders martingale. You will see on my video uh, uh, foundation coat starting where you'll see me with the come along hitch with the person with the martingale, and I'm bumping at the correct times to get the mule to pay attention. I do not ride with the come along hitch but I do have somebody on the ground that has, that knows how to use it. Now let's go back to this again. We got to go back. Did you take and train the mule in the very beginning with a come along hitch, making sure of straightness? That's what's important. Straightness, not looking to the left or right straightness. If you got the mule to listen with a small try with a come along hitch, then it's time to ride with a come along hitch. Uh, on the end of a, a, a somebody knows how to use it and the mule riders martingale. Awesome. Uh, next question that we got here. This one's a really good one. This one comes from Rebecca. Rebecca says, hi, Steve. I'm out a year away from getting my very first mule. At the moment, I'm focusing on learning as much as possible about mules so that I am prepared to achieve success and positive results and I embark on mule ownership. I love that. That's awesome. That's I look awesome. forward to your podcasts each week. I've learned so much. I have two questions for you. What makes a good mule person and what's the best sal saddle for a gated mule? Is there such a thing as a gated mule saddle or would any saddle mule saddle suffice? I just want to thank you for giving us like-minded folks an opportunity to pick your brain each week during your podcast. Thank you, Steve and Dave. Yeah, it's patience, folks. Uh, when it comes down to within these equine, not just the mule, not just the donkey, the horse, patience. You know, you folks are getting these animals so that you can escape the reality of the real world, okay? And you're in that equine world, and you feel good about it, yada, yada, patience, okay? Gated animals are very lateral in their front end and their back end if they are Missouri Foxtrotters or Rocky Mountains, okay? Your, your, your Pasos, your Pasofinos, your Tennessee Walkers are very animated in their front end. So let's go back to this. The big thing with mules is relief of the shoulder, the big problem we have out there, we've got a lot of people say they've got mule saddles and and it's not just the tree, folks. It's how the saddle is built around the tree where the rigging plates are and this sort of thing. My saddles, I've I've uh, ridden hundreds of mules and Dr. Miller says probably thousands by now. Uh, I've got clients all over the world that ride my mules, uh, uh, saddles and this sort of thing, gated animals, uh, uh, of all kinds and, uh, uh, all kinds of different types of mules. So will my, here's the biggest thing. Will my saddle work on your gated meal? Absolutely. Awesome. Very good. Next question we got here. This one comes from K. K says, Hey, I'm working with the mule for the first time. 
I've had horses for over 30 years. I like to lunge my horses in the round pin before I start training. Should I do the same with the mule? First, what is lunging? And then second, should I do that with my mule? Okay, lunging normally is you have a long strap, usually a nylon strap, on the end of the halter or on the end of the bit, and as they move moving around, you move them in to the right and left. I prefer you don't lunge. If I use a round pin, I use a round pin to have one that is hard to catch, or I use a round pin for my source single work, or I use my round pin for my foundational training. I do not walk behind them and ground drive them. I do not do any type of lunge work. Here's the problem. When you got a long strap, that gives you a lot of leverage. And if the mule's nose is tipped to the left, what's he gonna be doing? He's gonna be running through his right shoulder. You're gonna to learn to be tight enough all five major, major neck muscles and the throat latch. So yes, you're lunging, you're thinking, man, I'm doing good, but you're making five or six more other mistakes that are gonna be creating problems in the, in the future. So uh, my video, uh, uh, and, and mule riders, Martin Gale help you out a lot, but uh, lots of surf single work, folks, is what I do. I do not do lateral flexions. I do not disengage hindquarters. Uh, what I do do is I do balance framed up, top of the hip, top of the wither, top of the head, with a sur single, with a with a breaching, with a halter adjusted to start with. And then I work my way into the martingale. Awesome. Uh, let's see here. We just got a couple left. This one comes from Gloria on Facebook. Gloria says, can you please discuss hay preservative? Is it safe for mules? Is it mainly used to preserve hay when there is a high moisture content? My understanding is it won't help with the quality of the hay and it isn't for hay that has been rained on, but that it helps out to cure when there is high humidi humidity. I apologize for my long question. Gloria, you're, you're great. You're awesome. Uh, Steve, what do you say there about that? You know, I honestly don't know anything about the preservatives and this sort of thing that they're using these days. Uh, I personally have, I've bailed hay and I've, and this sort of thing over the years, but not here at the ranch. I've helped other people. Uh, I personally feed a pellet. I, uh, I, I, it's a cleaner feed. I don't have to worry about all the snake parts and the rat parts and the root and the rat poop and this sort of thing. Uh, the, the downside of hay is it's very dirty to feed and I don't feed it. I feed a pellet only. Uh, you can see, read my article on mules can't stand prosperity. You'll see, uh, some other, uh, videos that I've done with uh, professionals about it. And, but I feed a, uh, a, a pellet called Lake and light and it's got all the vitamins and minerals that I need. I don't have to worry about dirty feed and I go from there. Awesome. All right. So this question right here, I think this is our last one. Uh, this one is from uh, Debbie and it was a pretty long one. So I kind of parsed it down. She says she's got a mule. The mule's grip been great with the feet. Then there was a hoof problem, a foot problem. There was a fence nail in the lower part of the frog that's been pulled out, but it didn't look like it had been there long. Went ahead and shot her, gave a tetanus shot, treated the area. Then the mule began being terrible for the farrier when it came to the hinds. Pulls away, pulls sideways. Uh, on top of this, uh, Debbie's been treating the mule for white line disease for over a year. So is it that she does not want to have her hooves handled? Uh, she's better. She's getting better, but she still pulls away. Most of the time with treatment, she was tied to the trailer. Um, let's see. She does not do this all the time, but about every time with the farrier. Will, um, will the come along halter and DVD uh, for the ground foundation training kit allow me to correct and give me the tools and allow her to correct this bad behavior. Um, vet hasn't found any issues causing discomfort. She's 16, 15, three sweet otherwise and stands perfectly still to be mounted and waits for you to tell her what to do. Uh, saddle's great. Load's great. What do you have to say here about this one, Steve? Well, we've got that on video, don't we, Dave? Yeah, that's uh, right. And we got that on video. We had a mule that didn't want me to mess with their back feet. I put the come along hitch on. I'd already done some work with this mule with the come along hitch and you can see the mule wouldn't let me pick up the feet and then I used the come along hitch on it. Let me pick up the feet. No problem. So what's the mule trying to tell you? Trying to tell you that I'm really getting tired of all this doctoring and stuff and white lines disease is a, 
it's a horrible thing. Unfortunately, I wish they could find a way around it, but they can't. So the, the best thing to do is number one, make sure they're picking up the back feet properly, properly. What that means is you're standing on the left hand side, which is the near side. You put your left hand on the hip, you slide your hand down by the hock, you bring the foot forward first, then straight back and over to the left. Don't just pick it up and pull it out. You have a donkey joint in that hip. And in order for you to be able to disengage that hip so that the mule is comfortable, you have to bring it forward first, straight back, go over to the left, along with the come along hitch. Because here's the, here now, now the mule says, I can't trust you. You've been picking up my foot incorrect, and I bet you they've been picking it straight up and use that video. But pick up the foot correctly, folks. Forward first, straight back, over to the left. I think we showed that in a video, huh, Dave? Yep, we did. I sent her, I went ahead and sent her a link to the video, sent her a link to this uh, live stream, and that's it, Steve. That's everything we've got. So I want to thank everybody Fine. for coming and hanging out. David and Di, all the way from Australia. want to thank uh, David Pengeli. He was quiet, Dave. but he was watching. He says, great show. David Hoffman, uh, Yolanda, Suze, uh, Tori. I want to thank Donna, Kevin, uh, Eddie, uh, Dorsey, Edie. Uh, I want to thank Astra, Natasha, Dan, Sherry, uh, <laughs> Gloria. I want to thank Craig. I want to thank TJ. Wow. Uh, wow. I want to thank Nat. We've got a lot of friends who are hanging out with us today, and it was a lot of fun. Steve, is there anything you want to say before we finish up here? Yeah, no, no. I'm really in good shape. I, I really, I'm, I'm enjoying these uh, these get-togethers here once a week. Uh, we got a special one coming up on the evening here pretty soon. Uh, you want to throw the date out on that? We need to consider that. You know what? Yolanda, I'll be I will be sending out a. Uh, I'll be sending out an email reminder. So, folks, uh, if you are not signed up for our email list, go ahead and get signed up. I'll put a link in the comment section, folks. That's everything for us. We are really, really excited uh, to do these each and every week, and we cannot wait to see you again. So, God bless, and we will see you next week. You betcha, Yolanda. I want to see you shortly. Bye bye. She sent you an email. You got mail. Yep. I'm getting an email from her. You got mail, Steve. We'll see y'all. Okay.